at our National Filipino Evangelism Conference. Amen. I've spoken several times during the meeting so far, and I have done my best to give honor to everybody that where honor is due, and I do again want to say how much we appreciate everyone who is invested in making this conference a success, and I think we ought to mention Pastor Mahaduke and his wife, being our host here. We appreciate you so very much. Give honor to our two district superintendents that's here. Bishop Poitras preached an incredible word to us today. he gave us today, you would have seen that it could have been a continuation of several of the messages that have already been preached. And I want to say that strong, passionate word that we heard from our bishop here tonight, or today rather, I stand with that 100%. Praise God. And I appreciate that spirit. Amen. And give honor to uh, my good friend, Pastor Jesse and his family today, honor them. Brother Fortalisa spoke that he was one of the main speakers at the uh, installment services when I first became pastor in Spring Lake, North Carolina. And it was an honor to have him as a part of that special, special moment in my life that his family was a part of, and I appreciate that. He preached about the socket bearers, a message I'll never forget. I think everybody needs to hear. And I'll stand with Brother Pastor Benji, as he said the other night, that the message that uh, Pastor Fortaleza preached here the other day, yesterday, that needs to be preached at General Conference. We need that message to spread. Amen. Praise God. And of course, I cannot move without giving honor to all of the speakers that have been a part of this meeting. It's been a privilege to have you speaking and sharing your heart. And uh, we give honor to Brother Carter, who is our Multicultural Ministries Coordinator for this district. And if you're in this district, be looking to hear from him about All Nations Sunday and missionaries. Because we have a missionary that's starting to deputize right now. And the Lord willing, we want to bring them to this district and let you hear their burden about what we've got going on as a multicultural missionary. Amen. Finally, I give honor to our director, Pastor Benji Terrible. Appreciate him so much. He and his wife, Sister Julie, have been so kind to me. And uh, it's very interesting. And it's really quite interesting becoming a part of the Multicultural Ministries team and being asked to be the director. And Everybody involved in the team has been there before me. And everybody involved in the team, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, they're all older than me. But we have not had a moment's issue. Right. Not a moment's conflict. Right. They have accepted me and welcomed me to the role. And I am here to serve our ministry directors. And I thank God for men like Pastor Benjamin Bishwai and all of our blessings that we have been Amen. I want to take us to several portions of Scripture beginning in 1 Samuel chapter 18. And I feel like God has given me a word for this conference that I am praying will spread beyond into all of our ministries. In 1 Samuel chapter 18, beginning in verse 6, and Brother Chavez, I sent you an email just a moment ago with all my scriptures, and that'll help you. I didn't get a chance to tell you, but I did just send that. 1 Samuel chapter 18, beginning in verse 6, and it came to pass, as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul. They were there to meet the king, and they came with tabrets with joy and with 
instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul hath slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. And Saul, despite the fact that the parade was for him, and despite the fact that they were honoring his previous conquest, the Bible says Saul was very wroth. And the saying displeased him. And he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousand. But to me, they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day and forward. He had his eye on David. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul. Turn with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Beginning in verse 9, it says, Two are better than one. We'll say it again. Two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can they be warm alone? Someone say alone. alone. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Amen. Bear with me for one more portion, Luke chapter 15. We're very familiar with this chapter of the Gospels, but Luke 15, I'll take you to verse 25. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto them, unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry. He was angry and he would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gave me a kid. You never threw me a party that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this, not even referring to him as his brother, as soon as this thing, your son, as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, you have killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, the father speaking now said, Son. Son. Thou art ever with me. And all that I have. All that I have is yours. But look closely at verse 32 where he says, It was meet that we should make merry. It was right that we should make merry. One translation says, It was necessary. It was necessary that we should make merry 
and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. It was fitting. It was appropriate. It was necessary that we make merry and be glad. Today I'd like to speak on this thought. A necessary praise. We you lift your hands and let's ask God to be with us right now. Lord, by the authority of your word and by the power of your name, Jesus, I pray that you would settle on every heart that's in this room right now. If there's any work left to be done within us, let it be done in these next few moments. I pray right now that you'd give me clarity of thought, speech, and wisdom. Lord, to deliver the word that you've laid on my heart to allow us, God, or to lead this conference with a great desire. Lord, that we're going to win the world and we're going to love one another. We're going to encourage one another. We're going to build each other up. And we're going to be a blessing to each other and the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus, give us revelation right now that's going to overcome our issues. Revelation that's going to overcome our differences. Revelation that's going to bring us unity in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Clap your hands to the Lord right now. As you're being seated. We are an apostolic church. Amen. Amen. We are an apostolic church. And praise has been an element fundamental to every significant revival of our time. And if we're going to have revival in the future... We're going to have to be people that know how to praise the Lord. Can you say amen? We need a greater appetite for praise in this hour. I couldn't have chosen the music selection any better than they did today. Can't stop praising His name. Hallelujah. We can't stop praising His name. Some people can. Some people can give up after two or three minutes. But when you get into an apostolic church, if you're really in an apostolic church, it's going to be a place that knows how to praise the Lord. That's the priority. We're here to praise ye the name of the Lord. We've got to have a hunger for praise in this hour. We've got to have an appetite for praise in this hour. We've got to have a desire to praise the Lord in this hour. Can we shout amen to that? Hallelujah. And our praise to the Lord should not depend on external factors. Amen. In other words, God should be praised because He is worthy. Not because I have enough money. Not because I have an abundance. Not because I have a supply. Not because everything has gone my way. Not because I'm feeling blessed today. But my praise to the Lord should depend on any other factor. Doesn't matter who likes me or who doesn't like me. Doesn't matter who's for me or who against me. Doesn't matter how things are going today. I should praise God because God is worthy. And it should not be an ethnic thing. Can you say amen? Yeah. I've traveled this fellowship far and wide. And I'll tell you, there are some people that make little comments. They say little things and they'll say things like, I like being in the black churches because they really know how to praise God. I like being in the cultural conferences because they really get with it. They really know how to praise God. But can I tell somebody, there's nothing in the Bible that supports that thinking. Praise is not a cultural thing. Thing. Praise is not a language thing. Let everything that have breath praise you, the Lord. It doesn't matter if you're an all white church, an all black church, all Filipino church, or a multicultural church. You want to be a church that praises the name of the Lord at every opportunity because we should praise the Lord. Praise isn't a maturity thing. You don't have to be in the church 20 years before you start praising God. You don't have to be able to give an exegesis on the oneness of God before you begin to praise God. You don't have to become a pastor, a preacher, or a Sunday school teacher. All you have to do is just come and lift up your voice. You don't even have 